Okay, everyone, welcome to uh, the Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting, February 7th, 2024. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Um, you all, I, I believe, I believe everyone should have their agenda uh, that was sent to them and also the minutes of the previous meeting and, and a bunch of other documents. Um, so we have a uh, several members of the public here uh, we have kent who is uh more of like uh i think uh, kent's like an advisor i don't you know with kent you are a member of the public so you if you have something you like to say um if not obviously we're gonna hopefully hear to hear from you hello yeah and they uh i do actually i know we're going to talk about the municipal reforestation bill later on but there's another bill which i think is really worthy of our support um, it's um, S1319 or um, H2082, and it's very simple. It removes the restriction in state law against, um, you know, I'm just going to read it. It, re it amends the general laws by striking the following language. No zoning ordinance or bylaw shall prohibit or unreasonably regulate the installation of solar energy systems or the building of structures that facilitate the collection of solar energy, except where necessary to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. So it, I know that the siting of solar arrays is something that's been a concern, and this removes the, it, it allows municipalities to regulate that in their zoning. It removes yeah. the restriction that did not, that currently does not allow regulation of that in zoning. Um, so I think it, yeah. Can, so yep. sorry, yeah. Could, could you just tell me the first build, the first number? I have the H sure. H two eight two, but what's the first one? It's it's H two zero eight two. Yeah, and it's S one three one nine. And I did talk to. It's in the Joint Committee on Municipalities and Regional Government, and I actually called the office of um, that, and it's uh, Senator Oliveira is the one the Senate Chair. And apparently he's strongly in favor of this. So that's encouraging. Mm. Yep, that, uh, I agree that is encouraging because that seems to uh, be a stumbling block for many communities that are trying to regulate solar development um, exactly. within their community. And the uh, nine times out of 10, it seems like the attorney general's office rules uh, <laughs> negatively or, or uh, against the community that's trying to regulate the solar through um, some local... Um, uh, zoning regulation or some uh, oh. bylaw. So interesting. I'll I'll look I'll look the information up. But thank you. Hmm. It's been really daunting for communities faced with trying to do anything because of the rulings against yeah them acting threats of lawsuit. Um. Thank you, Sue. Uh, Jackie, hello. How are you? We haven't seen you in a while. We hope you're well. Oh, oh, I've been I've been following you on on the YouTube videos. Last night I spent some time watching some old ones, and I just remembered how much I love this commission. <laughs> I, I, I watched the May 2022 meeting in which you all voted for the STO, and there was talk of popping corks and having champagne, and there was so much joy in the committee. And the very next month. Uh, Wayne Fiden resigned and the STO got put on the back burner and it's 14, 15 months later and we still don't have an STO, but I mm -hmm. did watch Kent's presentation from December and I was blown away with uh, the information he got and I hope there would be some follow up on that. Mm -hmm. love, you, love you guys. Thank you, love Jackie. you too, Jackie. <laughs> Uh, we have another member of the public, uh, Austin Ford. Uh, do you have any public comment? Hey there, if I could get this to work. Uh, no, no public comment. Uh, I'm excited to be here. This is my first meeting checking in um, okay. from South Hadley and, and pretty active in the, the tree community over there as well. Mm -hmm. So um, just looking right. forward to to listening in on, on you guys. Are, Great. are you are you a member of the uh, tree committee in South Hadley? I am not. No, I am not. But um, okay. I did just sign up for the volunteer for um, Northampton. Um, okay. Just did it about 15 minutes ago. So uh, <laughs> um, 
just real quick, I have a background in forestry from UMass, and uh, I'm an ISA certified arborist. Um, don't don't work in the field anymore, but anyways, just keeping up with trees. Well, we're we're, ha we're happy to have you. Thank you. Um, our, okay, folks. Um, I sent out the minutes from the January third meeting. I don't know if folks had a chance to uh, review them. If you haven't. No. This would okay. This would be the time to review them, and then we can go from there. All right, Molly, you're you're all set. I think we're waiting for a few other. Um, Rich is all set. Janice, and I am. Uh, Sue, Jordan, you're all set. David was absent last month, so I don't know if you're reading them, David, or just waiting oh, for yeah, No, if you're waiting for me, I was absent last month, last month, so. That, that, that's, that's, that's okay, David. You have the ability to vote on them, so you can mm. continue reading. It's... Oh, I, I'm, I've finished reading, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, do any of the commissioners, well, first of all, let me, can I, is there a motion on the floor to accept the minutes as presented? I will move. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, second is Jordan. Thank you. Um, any discussion on the minutes or the contents of the minutes? Okay. No discussion. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Bonnie, could we have a roll call vote, please? Absolutely. Rich Persolity? Uh, yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yep. Jennifer? Yes. David? Uh, wasn't there, but read them. Uh, Richard Parrish? Oh, you're muted. Yes. Okay. And Jordan? Yes. Thank you. All right. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Um, timetable here okay uh let's see our tree our uh, chair report tree warden report uh so in the chair report the tree warden report let's start with that um the um we reported to you at the last meeting that i've been in communication with ever uh national grid about doing some removals uh at turkey hill i have yet to actually meet with the city the arborist from um, National Grid, I believe that's going to happen next week. Uh, we are actually going to walk the the upper end of the street and try to figure out how we can sort of thread the utility lines through the existing canopy without having to do, hopefully, very little public shade tree hearings, if any. That's my goal. So I'm still working on that. Um, there isn't a lot of pressure for us to do this hearing at the moment just because of where the project sits. So that's that's a good thing. 
Um, I had another request from uh, Eversource. Uh, sorry, I keep calling them Eversource. National Grid, excuse me, um, for a tree removal on um, North Farms Road. Uh, they are upgrading a, a, a residence utility uh, that's sort of an off uh, the they're off the beaten path of North Farms Road. Uh, they have a new solar array, so they need to upgrade their house drop, which requires changing a pole on the street, which may require removing a tree. So that also, that just landed in my inbox on Monday. So that has to be investigated. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention to you, uh, in case you're driving around town, is that uh, Eversource, I've got to correct now, Eversource Gas is going to be doing multiple um, trans, uh, multiple upgrades all through um, the Bridge Street area. So that would be in, in between Bridge Street and North. So all of those side streets like Lincoln, Grant, uh, Day, Glenwood, um, they're gonna replace all the mains, which are probably from the 1950s and they're gonna replace all the house services. So that, that requires, and also they're gonna be doing all the streets that are between Parson Street and uh market street so union walnut cherry uh linden etc so it re requires a little bit of uh, work on uh, my end to work with aerosource to actually walk the streets to make sure that they have all the proper tree protection in place prior to them starting so that'll be um that's also going to be next next week probably towards the end of the week i'll be walking at least the first leg. So the way they do these projects is they actually, they replace the mains. So last year they replaced the main on bridge, um, bridge street. This year they're replacing all the laterals or all the mains off of bridge street. And then what they do is they put all the mains in and then they return and they individually put in new house services. So sometimes they can actually run, uh, existing, uh, you know, rerun new services in existing services depending upon the pipe size. Most of the pipes there are cast iron. So typically they're so corroded, they can't actually run them internally. They have to run a new service. Um, and hopefully most of the services, when they won't do open excavation, they will be bulleted. So they do a, a excavation by the house, excavation out in the street, and then they actually run um, a hydraulic bullet through the ground and then they actually are able to pull the plastic pipe through there, which eliminates open excavation, which thus eliminates a lot of hardscape uh, damage, tree root damage, et cetera. There is the uh, occasion where that can't be done given the soil profile or there might be you know, uh, something in the way, old concrete or something. So there is sometimes open excavation. So those are the ones that I'm interested in uh, after they do that. So it's sort of like a two-stage process for the inspections of what I will be working with them. I have to say they've been excellent. Um, they've, they've done a lot of work in Northampton and they have been, uh, they've done everything that I've asked. Uh, when, when we needed open excavation, we needed air spading. They hired Bartlett Tree or uh, an alike company and did the work. Um, tree protection, done everywhere. So to actually to the point of some of the residents actually getting aggravated because they get upset because in the tree belt are blocked with these fences but so which uh, which has been good so um and my other my other quick thing i wanted to just talk about is um quickly is that the we had the uh, mass tree wards and forester association had their annual conference which was right after our um last meeting so um we ended up i just want to give you a brief synopsis we ended up having 470 three people register for the conference there were in attendance on the day one 433 um we had um and this the second day's attendance was probably more like 326 but the show was sold out we it, we couldn't fit any more folks in there and um the powerpoint presentations um that this, the one in particular that was given by francesco farini who was the keynote speaker i actually have um a pdf of that and I also have um, about 10 pieces of published work that he has done that he so graciously uh, let mass tree wardens have access to, which all has to do with like urban heat island, urban tree plantings, um, all the sustainability research that he's done in the European Union um, 
from a, a, like a two or three year time period. So I, I will share that with you all so you can just sort of at your leisure look at it. It was a great conference. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed myself and I'm looking forward to next year's conference. So, um, and then uh, just to touch uh, one other thing, uh, and I'm running a little over my apologies. One other thing is uh, Jackie's commentary about the significant tree ordinance. I have, I am trying, I've been in communication with the mayor about uh, several things. One of them is obviously our tree city USA application. The other one is that, I'm sort of waiting for my answer from the mayor's office about the status of the SDO because that actually is in the mayor's wheelhouse. Um, not really sure why it hasn't been brought to the council or hasn't been brought as a, upon a recommendation by the mayor to amend it. Um, I need to actually probably, if I have time, if, if she can carve out some time, I'd probably like to meet with her. So that's going to be another goal of mine. Um, and a, our, the other issue is Tree City USA. They have a new portal. I'm just about finished entering our data. Um, so I will have a report at our next meeting about the final numbers for Tree City USA for 2023. Yes, Sue. Um, when we were devising that, we were working with Carolyn Mish. Yes. Um, and she was motivated. Yes. She, I don't know if there's any way you probably thought of this, but of employing her, getting mayor's attention, getting it moving. Uh, I I actually have talked to Carolyn about it, and Carolyn is still very is still supportive of it. And I think with a, with all the changes that have happened uh, in planning and sustainability, and things happening over the you know, and I think the folk a lot it seems to me like a lot of the focus right now is on the city budget, et cetera, and the mayor's wheelhouse. Yep. So this, um, it's not that it's not important. It's just that it might be somewhere in the back burner. So I just need to touch base with the mayor and, and I will hopefully have something Great. to report to you at the next meeting. I hope uh, Carolyn's still on board. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Molly. I have two quick questions. Um, sure. You know, if the, um, Eversource work, are they doing that in order to repair gas leaks? uh both now ma mainly most of it's for upgrades mm. so most of their the three class tier of gas leaks they have pretty much repaired them but the problem is is that for example on linden street there have been probably like six gas leaks there in the last three or four years mm. so that like that is an aging main that they just can't keep patching so they they want to replace everything so i mean their goal is to upgrade everything that we have in the city that is pre um they're not they're not they don't really give you information about their get just show you where it is they don't tell you what year it is they don't they're very quiet mm -hmm. about it it might be because of homeland security issues i'm not sure but we have the plan sets we know where they're going to work but their goal is to replace all the aging infrastructure in the city so it's all um all plastic pipe so okay um, my other question is um yes do you know if the spotted lanternfly letter ever went out? Spotted lanternfly letter, Sue, uh, and I connected uh, after our last meeting, and I have it in a draft form. And that's, a, that's uh, I'm trying to figure, I'm, I'm, Donna was gone for two weeks. I wanted her to review it quickly. And then I'm going to ask the mayor if she would um, like to actually have, a, have it mailed or would she actually like to post it as a social media post? Mm. So everyone is aware of it. So that is the next step with that. Mm -hmm. So next meeting, I have three things to report to you on. So spotted lantern fly, STO. Well, the letter was targeting people who specifically had the um, Atlantis in their yard. Yes, and I'm that before the letter goes out. The question is, is that with you know, I want to ask the mayor, does she think it would be more effective? to use the social media platform um, and maybe in conjunction with the letter as well. So, mm -hmm. but. So, yeah, why not do both? Yes. And, and we may just end up mailing it after, after the, the uh, language is just looked at and decision is made. So. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right. That is all I have to report at the moment. Okay, next um, 
topic is the uh, municipal reforestation program bill. So uh, uh, all of you who received in your packet um, uh, the the links to the reforestation bill and um, the uh, two PDFs uh, talking about the reforestation bill. Um, I I have not talked to uh, Amy um, Meltzer in the type of the length of conversation I think that either Molly or Kent have, I'm not sure. And I was wondering if um, either one of you wanted to speak to your conversations um, regarding this bill. Or uh, are I, you I have to... not spoken, I have not spoken with Amy Meltzer. And okay. I have to admit that I did not actually read the bill before I sent out that email to all of you. So that was kind of embarrassing, but um, Kent did read it very yeah. thoroughly. I'm and happy he, to talk he's to the one that, Yeah, he talked to Amy Meltzer, so got a lot of good information. So Kent's gonna talk about it. So just to summarize briefly, the, the bill seems like a good idea, at least generally. It establishes a state advisory board to give um, technical advice about municipal tree, tree planting. Um, it, well, so I guess I'll mix up the things I like and the things I don't like. As written, it requires municipalities over 10,000 to create a reforestation plan, which is quite detailed. And then it establishes funding for um, funding projects within those plans. Um, so I think the general idea is good, but the, the re, it's kind of the details aren't really quite right. I think to have it optional participation rather than required and to make it very clear that the um, that all the costs of participation are supposed to be borne by the program. Um, and I did have some an email communication with Amy Meltzer, who is the person who sent out the email that I saw copied both to this commission and also to the, um, the Cambridge tree list that I'm still on. And she insists that it, that, um, there's, there's not a, that municipalities will not be required to participate if there's not money for it. And that it's totally the intent is not to create an unfunded mandate. Um, and, uh, and also that she says it will be phased in over time. And that all sounds great. You know, I think to have a statewide program that had some money that could fund willing communities to create a municipal reforestation plan and some projects and get money for the projects sounds great. But to require that every municipality comes up with a five-year, I mean, just looking at the challenge of finding planting sites in this city, the thought of coming up with a five-year project plan of where we're going to plant trees seems really unrealistic. So. Those are kind of my my main objections that it should be it should be optional. Um, the funding is allocated according to specific criteria, but it's it's not clear. It's not super clear within the bill the way it's written that funding covers the creation of these plans. It's really much more the funding part is much more focused on funding the projects that the municipalities come up with in their plans. And there's there's some really sketchy timing too that everybody all the all the participating municipalities, which is to say most of them, because it's required as written, need to come up with these plans within three years, but the funding is not really established until three years either. So I'm not it's not really at all clear how the funding is supposed to pay for the creation of these um, fairly detailed reports. Um, now, as, uh, Amy, Amy did say that the next step is the Ways and Means Commission, and that's where the funding would be ironed out. And I confess, I'm pretty much entirely ignorant of how 
le legislation gets through the Massachusetts legislature rather than the basic, you know, civics passes the House, passes the Senate, the governor signs it. So I don't know. Well, I've heard that today is the deadline somehow, at least a practical deadline for getting things out of committee. And I don't know if this was voted out of committee today. Um, and I also don't know what the process would be for getting changes to it. But the, the literal language of the bill as it's written right now, I think is pretty badly flawed, even though I think the intent is great. <laughs> Ken, I'm in. I'm. I so admire your um, so respect the level of detail and carefulness with which you're applying your attention to this. Um, thank you. I was. I'll tell you, I was alarmed that from that the short summary is clear that we would be a participating community, and then it gives in this very long list of of the things that have to be in the plans that we would have to come up with within. <laughs> three years and alarm bells started going off <laughs> for me. And I started looking, is that really what's in the bill? So yeah, I did, I have spent quite a lot of time with it. That uh, is wonderful. Is and the idea of an advisory commission is interesting and technical support for communities. Is there anybody here who has a better idea of how bills actually get created in our Commonwealth? No. I mean, I civics civics one hundred and one. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I, I guess I could be in touch with Amy and yeah. see what the current status is, and and ask her. What I think she that. Suggests. And I've also expressed my concerns to um, Representative Sabadosa, who I believe is a co-sponsor of this bill. Oh, well, great! Um, I think that you know those committees have to do with it has to get out of committee or it dies. So the committee decides, I think the committee is composed of people from the House and people from the Senate. Yeah, it's a joint and, committee. Yeah, and they have to decide if the bill is even gonna go to the next level or it just dies. And then it, it's done until the next <laughs> session if somebody brings it up again. So one of the things that I found interesting about this after reading the documentation is the bill, um, the bill is actually requiring the state to create an urban forestry advisory council, which we we don't have an official one that's under state auspices. Mass Tree Wardens and Foresters Association is the advisory council as it stands since 1913, but not um, not in like the name of M any MGL um, statute. So <clears throat> that would be. Uh, interesting in itself because if you go to page just you know just operationally my brain works operationally right so on page six it says composition of the urban forestry advisory council uh, is going to be someone would be appointed by the secretary and urban forestry advisory council will include members from the public private non non-governmental organizations with expertise in urban forestry arboriculture landscape architecture green infrastructure demand side energy efficiency management and climate change resilience and mitigation. Members of the council may include representatives from the following and they give probably, I think 12 bullets <laughs> of uh, cross, you know, cross, um, cross industry standards folks that might be, you know, municipal and arboriculture, municipal arboriculture tree warden association, urban landscape architect, demand side green energy, nonprofits, local affordable housing or community development organizations, workforce development programs, municipal departments of public works responsible for roads, water main sewers, utility infrastructure. My point being is that just that piece of this bill alone or the suggestion of that is one heck of a heavy lift because all these individuals that I just mentioned, they all have you know, we are, we are, yeah, we're, but we're all looking through the sustainable lens um, in a different way. Um, you know, the, 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 the sustainable lens of our commission versus the sustainable lens of, uh, you know, an environmental justice organization might be different. Uh, workforce development might be different. 
um, researchers with expertise in data collection related to fields of natural resources. You know, it's all different. And, and we, I think, have experienced as a commission the uh, the push and pull of trying to deal with multiple organizations just within our city, trying to preserve trees and trying to actually protect the lens that we look out of, in essence, is what I'm saying. So that alone is a pretty heavy that's a pretty heavy lift, not to mention everything else that Kent just talked about and the fact that basically it seems to me like they're asking communities to front load the money to do these, have, to have these requirements. If you want to be part of this, you have to front load the money. And then in three years time, the money's released. Now, what that money looks like, what their reimbursement is, I have no clue. Um, so that's just my, that's just from, that's one look at it that I, I looked at it, uh, earlier and then I just kind of refresh myself about that part. The other thing too is that from the standpoint of the amount of grant funding that's available in the state, you know, there's two, there's um, there's really two state tracks, low, uh, you know, that provide grant funding for urban forestry initiatives and that's through Department of Conservation and Recreation Challenge Grants. And then you have the uh, Energy and Environmental Affairs Grants which um, the Energy and Environmental Affairs manage funding that has been given to them by IRA, which is the, Re the Inflation Reduction Act. DCR issues funds that are actually run through a myriad of sources, including state funding and maybe some IRA money. So there's two entities already that are providing funding for municipalities to do this work. And, and reading this, and Kent, correct me if I'm wrong, but I didn't see anything about any of those two organizations in here or working with either one of them or even mentioning them unless I'm missing something. Um, um, but the funding section is pretty vague. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, and, and the other, one other thing I will say, and then I'll stop talking is that I actually, Amy, Amy uh, invited, uh, invited me uh, to be an advisor to this group as one of many advisors. So they have multiple advisors. Um, and I only really had one conversation way back in the beginning about native plants and using native plants in the public right away for tree plantings, et cetera. Um, and really, I didn't have any, I wasn't asked any questions about the context of the bill as you see it in front of you in the, in the, you know, in this form that Ken spoke of. So I'm not really sure where they got all this information from. Not that I'm disagreeing with any of it, but I'm just letting you know that I was part of a conversation, but none of this part of this conversation that you're reading. So I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, Rich is Rich is, is this commission being asked to either endorse or not endorse this bill just as an advisory to the state? Uh, I think or we received, yeah, I received an email asking, uh, and Molly, you can cooperate this, but I believe, I believe it was, they were asking for individual support mm -hmm. and understanding that municipal boards may not be to support, they may not be able to support this in full, you know, for, I, I, so I think Rich, the, the answer to your question, the short answer to your question is they were looking for individuals to endorse this. Yeah. I mean, if they picked up an endorsement of a commission, from a municipality, I think that would be a bonus to this because then it would rise, you know, as there's more, there's more uh, parties endorsing these bills as they move through committees, the committees see and they have testimony, they have, they'll, have a, they'll have hearings. And then if you are supporting the bill, they would invite you to testify um, in why you're in favor of this so they can hear testimony and then they can determine if the bill, uh, as Molly said, like is merited and can be moved on to the next committee. Um, and uh, I did not endorse this because I personally would not, I would not endorse this, not that I don't believe in it, but that's not without actually having a conversation with the mayor, just because I would be endorsing it in my role as the tree warden. And so mm -hmm. if I have the tree warden hat under the mayor's, uh, right. you know, at, at the mayor's approval. And, and I think Rich, to answer your question, if, if, if uh, commissioners are interested in endorsing this, then by all means, we should ask the mayor if she, we could get um, her blessing to sign off on this. So that, you know, that 
this is why we put this on the agenda also because of the fact that it popped into our inboxes and and you know the previous conversation and i didn't realize they needed like an endorsement like yesterday because it came in the email and it was like you got to endorse this by monday and the email was like on a thursday so it doesn't give us a lot of time to move as a governmental body no. so Is that well, I, wish I, I wish i had i wish i mean i won't say i wish i hadn't sent the email but um uh i wish i had thought about all the things that kent brought up because i don't really feel comfortable about the bill at this point no. i don't i don't think it is good enough you know for all the reasons that we brought up it's maybe a step in the right direction but all those reasons plus like the whole funding thing sounds very uncertain like it's not like there's a definite source of funding it would come from appropriations okay that means they have to vote to fund it you know how much is that going to be and is that even a priority with all the other things going on in the state that's that's a very good point molly so you were going to say something um, do we have any context on how this came about? I mean, is like, are it, are there any like nonprofit groups who who helped write it or individuals? Ad, you know, yeah. how, did, how did you hear about it, Molly? How did it come to? I I got an email through um, somebody at the Unitarian Society on their climate action group. They got it from somebody else you know, and then I passed it on. I don't know where it originally came from or who who even wrote the bill. But I think, Rich, you said that Lindsay Sabadoso was a, you said a sponsor, but was she one of the original authors of it? I don't, I don't know. The, the, um, the top of the, the synopsis, an act establishing municipal reforestation program Sponsored by Senator Cynthia Cream, mm. Representative Steve Owens, Representative Jennifer Belensky Armini, is a powerful strategy uh, for climate change mitigation and, and environmental justice. Um, I was just actually looking through my an email from back in October. Um, so I guess their goal was to get this municipal reforestation bill included in an environmental bond bill. So apparently, if there's an environmental bond bill, which means that the Senate would authorize the governor if the governor signed it and it was approved, or sorry, the state house would approve a bond for um, environmental justice issues uh, or other issues, and they wanted to try to get this reforestation bill in there at the same time, mm -hmm. so possibly that it might have been funded, but that not, wasn't really clear in the email, um, and what the ask at the time was we're hoping to find people who are knowledgeable in the following areas, growing native trees from seed, um, nursery business, including expansion and possible startup costs, creating partnerships, DCR, nurseries, community college, urban landscape training, native tree planting and maintenance in municipalities, urban youth education and job training, funding pathways through legislative, executive, or corporate. So that's how I got you know, originally asked to be an advisor, but I didn't, I, I didn't really advise anyone. I just had a conversation about native, you know, planting sugar maples in the public right away. And I'm being very, um, you know, very, I'm being very, uh, it's not all we've talked about, but basically it's like native trees are wonderful, but they have their place now and they're not in the public right away, all of them, because they just can't handle the environmental stress that we have. So but that was the email that I received from her. And then we had a phone conversation and then all of a sudden I really didn't hear from them. And then as Molly indicated, all of a sudden we got an email and it says, well, here we are. We're, we're, we're all of a sudden we have to, we're, we need your support so this can move forward. Right. I mean, it's, uh, it has tremendous scope in terms of what funding would be needed to do everything they're saying yes. labor and, it's just a huge laundry list of expenses. I don't know. <laughs> Big I mean, I mean, I mean, if the commission, if the commission wanted to, we could ask. Uh, 
I, we could ask Amy to actually appear in front of the commission if you want if you want more information if you think it's worth our worthwhile to you know or or if there's someone else that's involved that might speak to this I don't I don't know I haven't there is no other point person that I've spoken with it's Kent saying that we'll find out very soon if it even made it out of committee maybe contingent on it making it out of committee that would be really important because as a commission and people who are trying to pay attention to what's going on with trees, this would be a really big deal if this were actually moving forward. And we'd certainly want to give input on on some of the ideas, like the cross purposes of of the different groups who would be part of it or individuals. I could yeah, that probably makes sense. See um, whether it made it out of committee and if so, kind of what the next steps are and what would be the way that we could influence the contents of it or how how the final bill gets shaped. Maybe I can get some education about the uh, the sausage making in our state legislature. I think if, we, um, if one of us contacted Lindsay Sabadosa and just asked her, she's very good about responding personally and very promptly to um, letters that she gets, emails. Um, somebody could ask her, did it make it out of committee be, you know, we want to know on the Urban Forestry Commission because we have a number of um, concerns that we would like to address if it did make it out of committee. Who would like to email her? She is a tree volunteer here in the city. Oh. Long-standing tree volunteer. Um, well, I could do that. Unless sure. you want to, Kent. Do you want to? No, I'll reach out to Amy. Okay. So Molly's reaching out to Lindsay. Yeah. Might be good to get two different perspectives <laughs> too. Right. Yeah. Thanks yeah, I mean, you guys the, so much. The, the other, yes, thank you. The other thing you can do too is you can actually follow the bill on the state's uh oh you can follow the bill on the the state's website as well. Oh, okay. And then actually, if they have a if they have hearings, they're usually videotaped, so you can actually watch the hearings. Some of the hearings, depending upon what they're for, sometimes are live, so you can actually, uh, you know, it's like let's watch only and listen. You can there's no participation, but um, but just another. So you could actually go to the top of the. You could the bill number is uh, H H point uh, eight six nine is from the House of Representatives and from the Senate, it's S, S.452. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so links you, at the top of that two page or- Oh, yeah. link. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right there. yeah, yeah. Right. Kent, you're, 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 uh, you're heaven sent, my friend. You, oh. you got your, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, that's all I can say. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Any other, uh, comments or questions or i guess we'll just wait till we hear more information and if uh if you have information between now and then before our next meeting and you want it on the agenda so just let me know molly or kent i'll put it back back on there okay, okay? Yep. all right thanks uh okay the uh we are waiting with bated breath to see the, the northampton tree coordination diagram so um Jen, I made you. I made you a co-host. I'm not sure if you. Who would like? Do you want to speak to the diagram? Does Sue want to speak to the diagram? Do one of you want to share it so we can see it? Uh, go for it, Jen. I can speak to it. Let me see if I. Thank can, you. Let me see if I can share it. Hold on. Let's, oops. Hold on. Uh, shoot. You have to be a co-host. I. I, no, I, made I, a one. I am. Okay. I have to. Um. Hold on a second. Uh, all right. Okay, so uh, I'm kind of a rube at this. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, there I am. Wait a minute. I don't want to hide the video. Okay, so.
Uh, how do I? Son of a gun. I don't really. Oh, man. I don't know if I can make this do what I want it to do. All right. We can, we all received it. So if, if it has to be, we could just look no, at our own versions. Oh, uh, hold on a second. I can, um, let me try this again. Oh, yeah. I opened it. I could share it if you want. Yeah, that would be fabulous. All right. All right. <laughs> I just, so I just can't on. seem Let's to see. negotiate the, what I'm supposed to, I, I have it pulled up. I just can't get it to come up on the screen. All it right, has so to be the most recent oh, screen oh. that you looked at. Thanks, Rich. Yep, thank you. There we go. All right, there we go. So, there we go. So, um, I started uh, the 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 way this came about is I started kind of taking over Rob and Alicia's job um, fully or in the, the fall of uh 2023 and um you know i had i'd been in this planting program a long time but i don't think i had a full picture of um exactly everything that rob and leisha were doing and it became apparent to me pretty quickly that um i would not be able to replicate that as a human <laughs> so <laughs> so uh so i'm a real visual thinker and kind of like a process person sometimes uh, uh so anyway i came up with this diagram and um i can go through my ideas and then um uh i think rich parish had a couple of good ideas particularly about one aspect of this so um what this is what i did was i kind of looked at oh where do we need somebody who's in charge and mm -hmm. all of these kind of uh, rectangular boxes would be positions of being in charge. And the other impetus for this is um, much of the day-to-day -day runnings of the planting program were in Rob and Alicia's head. And um, I would like to see this program sustainable in the future. So mm -hmm. I wanted to try to figure out a way to codify it or to kind of or if somebody had to leave or we could like, you know, um, talk to people and get them to help us out, volunteer. And in this commission, a lot of times there's questions and oh, we want to do this, we want to do that. And it was kind of clear to me that even all of us don't fully understand. So that being said, um, I kind of view the Tree plant, the whole tree program is kind of two parts. There's the planting program and there's the tree maintenance program, which is becoming more important now that we have like 2,000 younger trees out there that we've planted. The key is to keep them alive so they can provide the services, sequester the carbon, that kind of stuff. So let's uh, just go over to the tree maintenance side first. Um, uh, places where there are person's name highlighting in yellow are places that we have somebody acted in the role. So uh, one, one thing I thought we needed was an equipment coordinator. So we do have a shed in uh, our, at our Canaan field with that we keep all our tools, but um, you know, this person, all these positions would have a group of small group of volunteers who are interested and could carry out the duties. So the equipment co coordinator would, you know, clean, sharpen, inventory the tools, purchase. Um, and I don't even know how we purchase. Uh, we'd have to figure that out, but somebody knows. Um, the blue lines are lines of communication. And one of the goals here is to minimize the amount of different people who are communicating directly with Rich to try to kind of, um, you know, to keep that pretty tight. So the equipment coordinator would... Uh, that wouldn't be a super heavy lift, but it would be um, uh, with a group of volunteers and at more intense at different times of the year. And then on the tree maintenance side, we have a very uh, well-oiled machine doing pruning. Uh, Rich Parrish is communicating with uh, Rich, the tree warden, and um, we have a small group of volunteers that goes out several days a week and um, Prunes. The goal is to prune 
uh, three, roughly three years after the trees have been planted and then go back at five years. Um, so that's, uh, Rich could speak more to that uh, after I run through this. And then um, I think um, we need a person to um, volunteer or we need help with the growing season maintenance coordinator. And um, again, this could be a group of, uh, have a, a small group of volunteers or a larger group of volunteers. Um, I think Rich Parrish had some ideas about this. Um, uh, you know, the stake should only be out there for roughly a year. The arbitrine needs to be, you know, taken off and we often can reuse that. We have the um, mesh guards that are on the trees that many of the trees are getting too big to have it on there. And uh, some of the trees have metal kind of poles. I, I call it electrical conduit. Rich has another name for it. I can't remember what it is, but. E so e M EMT. EMT. I knew there was another name. Uh, so uh, maybe weeding, sometimes remulching, if that was something we needed to do. Well, sometimes we'll have trees that get too much mulch piled on it again and to go out there. And eventually we're going to have to remove the tree diapers. So that's all on the tree maintenance side. Um, on the planting side, um, I have volunteered to keep doing the planting coordination and um, that's a lot of communication and lists and going out and finding sites and all that kind of stuff. And kind of at the same time, um, you need somebody who can manage the spreadsheet, which we call the tree tracker. And Sue and I worked together in the fall and um, started working together again uh, this spring. Uh, we just w had a phone meeting, uh, I think yesterday, yeah. um, about this. Um, so there's a lot of, we we communicate during the planting season, right before and right after, probably once a week, that we really sit down and square things away. And uh, we do have two volunteer coordinators who um, I usually communicate with Paul on Wednesdays and Sue communicates with Vicki for the Saturday planting. And we got a new uh, person to do the dig safes. Um, there's the dig safes that are done in the field, which every single tree site has to get dig safed and then revisited to make sure the stake doesn't need to be moved. And that was kind of a, a part that slipped through the cracks, but we caught it pretty quick. Um, so, uh, Tom Bassett has agreed to be that person to that, let's say I go out and put a bunch of stakes, I paint the curb, we have a small group of people who know how to cite trees and mark for dig safe, then pictures are taken in a certain way and they get sent via email to the dig safe coordinator. And that person, uh, I don't even know totally what the process is, gets sent to dig safe and through the city and then gets a trench permit done and has to figure out whether that has gotten done yet. And those dig safes have to be take about 30 days to complete before we can actually put a tree in that space. So you really have to be kind of ahead of the game. I connected Tom Bassett with Alicia who had done them with Rob for years and they are um, gonna do a little training together so Tom can get up to speed on how to do it. So that was a big one. That's like a linchpin to have somebody who knows how to do that. So um, then, um, so that's kind of for the basic, all the tree lists, all that kind of stuff. That's what's involved there, getting the trees in the ground. Um, then we have a setback program. So, um, which is becoming more important on um, the setback program. We have really filled a lot of the prime tree belt spots. Um, and uh, I think we've discussed in this commission several times about how important the setback program is. Um, and that per coordinator person could make it a huge job or a smaller job, depending on you know how much, you know, how active uh, 
we want this setback program to be, there could be a lot of recruitment of citizens to plant trees in their yard, or we get requests by the website and also through Rich Tree Warden, and those get put onto the tree tracker. Those get dumped into the tree tracker. So Christina volunteered to head this up, and that um, takes a lot of um, uh, backtracking and touches. You know, you're kind of selling a tree to somebody, and um, you you often a lot of follow up before the tree actually gets in the ground. They have to sign a um, uh, an agreement and various things. So um, that was just not something I could take on as well. So um, so there could be a small group of volunteers who is interested in in. I think Rob did some knocking on doors. I, you know, I, a lot. You know, yeah, yeah. So thousands. Yeah. So that, that again could be this huge thing or it could be, uh, you know, just simply fulfilling the requests. Um, I'm in pretty close contact with that person because I'm the one they could, they'll tell me, Hey, uh, we have the agreements for these, put these on the list, you get these trees and um, and I'll put them on the list and to get them in the, you know, to get them delivered. Um, another um, area that I thought um, needed somebody to kind of head up. Uh, and again, none of these are, you have to do everything yourself. The idea is to recruit, you know, a co-coordinator or, um, you know, other people who are interested and, you know, they're, this is kind of their, their contribution. Um, we have uh, the special plantings coordinator. So we have um, various uh, projects that are usually bigger, like the schools. David did a lot of work uh, um, unofficially as a special plantings coordinator, um, neighborhood plantings. Uh, I have a, a list of um, kind of bigger plantings that need extra um, contact. For example, there's on Grant, Grant Ave, is that over by Bridge Street School? Like kind of one of those small dead end streets? I think that's, yes. anyway. Yeah, so we have, a. I was there just looking and a neighbor came out and she is, I have her phone number. I met with her. She's really interested in getting her street to um, have a neighborhood planting and um, is uh, ready to be the neighborhood coordinator. And um, a lot of them would be setback trees. And, you know, we basically just need somebody to take that on or Hampshire Heights, I, you know, oh, I want to be the person who goes to Hampshire Heights. And probably that would take a little figuring out because and that's an environmental justice place but that's housing authority which means it's which means it's local and federal and then you probably would want to get in touch with the citizens council and have some meetings and a residents council whatever they call it so um that would be you know here's a project it might be active for six months or it might be active for a year and then we go and plant it and then you know once everything's sewed up and then finally, the day we have put trees in the ground, we need a handful of people who can lead a planting. Um, Sue and I mostly led the plantings in the fall, um, but it has to be somebody who can make decisions like, oh, what if the stake is sitting on a gas line? What do we do about that? We missed that one. Or, or if, um, you know, sometimes the root balls need to be figured out or, uh, one time we were digging up by Loc on Locust Street and there was a giant piece of uh, blacktop underneath where we were putting a tree and we couldn't put it there. So what do we and do? And the about public that? comes out um, very rarely, but once in a while, you need somebody as a buffer between the volunteers and the public. Right. Um, I mean, most people come out all the time and say nice things, but if there's somebody who is agitated, you need to have somebody who's the leader. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And who can just, you know, you gotta 
pick, get the buckets all picked up at the end or make sure the tools are put back and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we can always use people who are, and we can train you if you want to, you know, if you want to, um, you know, the more the merrier on that one, really. So, um, Rich Parrish, do you want to talk about your thoughts on, uh, you had some ideas on the growing season kind of thing? Yeah, just very quickly, the, uh, the box mint showed growing season maintenance coordinator is not existent at this time. Uh, right. But I see that it is a significant value add to our uh, existing trees in that. And what my uh, proposal would be that uh, we have a coordinator for that and that we, among our volunteers, we uh, divide them, say, among uh, the different wards, perhaps two or three volunteers per ward. Each of them gets a list of all of the young trees in their area. And then over the summer at their convenience, they visit the different trees and go through you know, any needed uh, maintenance, such as uh, you know, mulch, weeding, uh, removing some of the previous uh, apparatus that are on the trees. And, and there would not need to be a constant communication with the tree warden on this at all. Mm -hmm. Only if there's a severe need for some kind of remediation or, right. but at the end of the season, perhaps this coordinator can just collect the information from the volunteers and then just summarize it and report it to the tree warden. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think this goes directly towards, you know, improving the, uh, the welfare of our existing trees. So uh, I'm going to talk among some of our volunteers to see if we can identify a coordinator for this and uh, and then move forward with that. So this was just kind of the way my brain works and, uh, you know, try to give people a better picture and the kind of gaps we could use some extra people. I know some people had talked about having access to uh, volunteer lists or something. So, or, you know, places they list volunteer and, openings or so um this is beautiful jen and yeah. oh. i understand did did jess help yeah just kenny um just kenny yeah she Drops she up. digitized it i meant to say that yeah that was not me just <laughs> just love to give oh yeah. you get credit for just yeah. the overall thinking it through wow. yeah I like the way your brain works. <laughs> so anybody have any questions or comments or? Yeah, um... Jen. I got a question. Um, first of all, this is awesome. And kudos to you and those that assisted and sort of putting it all out there. It's a great way to get organized. Um, sort of around the, the, the role of uh, special planting, <clears throat> excuse me, special plantings coordinator relative to planting coordinator. And as part of that, how does planting happen now in terms of like who decides and what are priorities and how, how does it sort of execute in, in terms of like who captures where the requests are, who vets them? Like I see you do the vetting, but um, what would be the difference in the role? Oops, can't hear you. Oh, I can't, uh, you went off the mic there. What okay, would be the now? difference in the roles? That's, That's good now. Want. Thanks. So, how has um, it worked in the past? Are you asking? Um, I'm asking how it works now, and how would what would be different? Sorry, what would be different about what the planting coordinator would do? Because, so how does planting happen now, and then what would be different with the coordinator? Sorry. So right now um, we have various um, uh, uh, pipes that come in <laughs> with tree requests. So there's setbacks that people are asking for, and then that would go on the tree tracker. And then um, I just got a list from Rich about the um, takedowns that he's done. 
most recently and the stump, whether the stumps are ground or not. So I have to go out or somebody can help me go out and look in the community at those sites and does it, um, does it, uh, is it you know, is it an appropriate, is it appropriate place to put a tree and what size? And then just, um, those are the main ways that we, last fall, we were cleaning up all these various lists and mm -hmm. um, we pretty much have cleaned that up. We have a little bit of leftovers from the fall. I don't know, maybe 20 trees or something, 30 that we didn't plant the yet. Placements and yeah. Yeah. trees oh, yeah. that died. Then, or... Right. Then we, if we have d dead ones, we go and pull them out. And then that goes on the tree tracker. So the tree tracker is really the way we have, that's where our lists come from. And then I try to group them. Uh, right now, Rich can deliver seven or eight trees uh, reasonably with the staff. There's always a staff issue. Um, and uh, we, I try to group them kind of in the same neighborhood. We used to plant like big swaths of streets, but we've kind of filled that up. You know, we, so um, that's the main place that the, that where we get the, um, you know, the sites from, or somebody might, you know, like I was walking some kids to school and I was like, whoa, we could plant trees right there. They just redid this curb, you know? <laughs> so I'll kind of write that down and, you know, then we dig safe on them. And um, I send the list to weekly list to Rich. He gets them delivered. We get the volunteers and we put them in the ground. And then the, special okay. plantings, are things that kind of percolate to the top, like um, Rotary came, Rotary went to the mayor who came to us and said, work with Rotary on um, a tree planting initiative. And we had wanted schools and we had a commissioner who'd been working a little with the schools and that momentum came together so we could do some really big school plantings and get everybody on board. So that would be an example of special plantings coordinator. There's oftentimes a community group um, other sure. groups might be the Girl Scouts come every year mm -hmm. or different clubs and things like that who might get involved. Or this Hampshire Heights has been percolating up. Um, we went there to take out some trees and we were just like, whoa, this really needs trees. Prior to that, there was the Fruit Street um, site mm -hmm. where one of the volunteers lived and that percolated up. Like a lot of trees came out there and that was a place where we could you know, you need somebody to get in touch with the housing authority. I think Rich R Tree Warden took on a certain role. It's working closely with him. Finding these special plantings, they tend to be bigger. Mm -hmm. that, that's really um, helpful. Thank you. Um, and do these, not to get too far afield, but do these uh, special plantings typically come from different pots? So if the Girl Scouts, you know, want to do a planting or rotary, they will then sort of support, you know, pay for the materials and the installation. No, our we there's a line item in the city budget for trees and tree supplies. So we the city purchases. So the tree commission advises, and some of us have multiple hats here. I think is sure. why it gets a little confusing. Then the city purchases, takes the delivery stores and delivers for us. And then Tree Northampton, the nonprofit that spun off of, um, really we were doing everything and we realized we couldn't. So that's who coordinates the volunteers and does the training of volunteers and has the tools and, you know, that kind of, that's kind of so the way it works. They're largely responsible for day of installation sort of corralling the volunteers and doing the install right right okay, essentially awesome. all the Thank volunteers you. are part of tree northampton because tree northampton tracks the volunteers and provides the communication platform for a lot of what goes on anything you know to do with the volunteers uh just another additional Shoot. answer to that question jordan Mo is Mo molly Sorry, just oh, one, just, no, sorry. no, it's okay. I just want to make everyone aware of the time. It's 20 of, 
and we have one more item on the agenda so we can okay it, it's up to the commission whether you want to just table the next agenda to the next meeting or do you want and continue to dive into this that's fine but it's really up to you all what you'd like to do I appreciate Generally. the answers to my questions. I could take the, you know, no, that sort of satisfies my query. Um, and, and thank you. Molly wanted to say something. Well, just a quick thing. You were asking about, I think, how we decide where we plant the trees. Um, just the regular trees. I don't know if you were asking that too, but that is not just that random. Was, that was satisfied. Thank you. Okay, great. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Um, I just want to say one thing briefly. Thank you, uh, Jen and um, Mile. Who? I'm sorry. Who, yes. Did, yes. Um, yes. Yes. Okay. Let's just make yes, sure that's Kenny. on record that Jess digitized it all. Mm -hmm. I think it's excellent. Um, I actually would like to explore uh, a, uh, like a, a flow chart that also has the DPW uh, and DPW staff role roles mm. because there's uh there's things that bridge um that we bridge the gap um basically after the trees are planted you know we're responsible for watering them for a couple of years even before necessary volunteers go back to them so i think uh, maybe it doesn't have to be maybe on that flow chart but maybe we could maybe jen or a couple of us could sit down and just because that would be good for succession planning in essence if i you know when time comes to retire or something happens or whatever at least people know what we're doing. I mean, again, that's all in my head as well. So, right. um, you know, but you can clearly see that that's tied together. I will say one other thing. I like this flow chart a lot because I think it would be beneficial to have a finalized flow chart that shows everything that runs this initiative on both, you know, on, on both legs that are there basically for other communities. I think other communities would actually right. really benefit from the knowledge and experience that we have. Yeah. Um, and actually would give them an insight as to how much work has gone into putting something together like this. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I thought of a few things looking at it that we could add in as essential details. But thanks to maybe we should title it, you know, this is from the volunteer perspective. When um, Alicia, I'll, I'll go quick. Alicia and um, Rob both moved away and they've been doing all this stuff a lot or tremendous. Most of what you just saw, they were just doing it and it just magically happened. And um, so what this was, this came out of meeting with Rich and trying to figure out uh, some kind of, of structure that would, that volunteers could keep this machine going so it really should be titled something like from the volunteer <laughs> point of view, because it's all it's all volunteer. Mm -hmm. And then what Rich is talking about is like, well, the miss or big missing piece is the watering and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, this wouldn't necessarily have to be volunteer. A lot of communities are paying people to do a lot of these things. <laughs> I'll stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Work in progress as always, but uh, big, huge steps here. Excellent. Um, the last, uh, the last agenda item is uh, spring planting slash setback tree planting program. So I wasn't sure if uh, I could speak quickly to the spring planting, uh, as Jen alluded to in our previous meeting. Um, or sorry, in our, in our previous agenda item, I supplied Jen with a list of. Uh, stump locations um we also have uh, i've been working with uh jan and sue to make a running list and uh which i think sue and jen have put in the tree tracker sheet of planting locations other than the stump areas like armory street there's we have to replace four trees ice yep. pond drive there's a potential project there so jan and i um are gonna probably just meet in person just to, or maybe not maybe just talk on the phone about the stump list and try to formulate that to get us to sort of give us a number plus all the other projects in the pipeline get a number of trees that we want and then i got to provide jen uh with a tree um an inventory list from chestnut ridge and amherst nursery so we can basically sort of like see what they have in, in stock as long as it follows the guidelines from our tree planting guidelines uh, then or the uh, species selection, then we would backfill into those numbers for this year. 
Uh, um, again, personally thinking uh, like Jen did as well, that, you know, we're, we planted 171 trees last year, you know, we, that's uh, much less than we've planted in the past, but it's okay because we are still sort of in transition, um, still trying to figure out, you know, define and refine all the roles and uh, also having to care for the 2000 plus trees we've already planted. So um, I have not had any conversations about the setback program. I did see though that Jordan did forward to uh, a couple of us, the um, in regards to the setback planting, the uh, native uh, sh uh, woody shrub list. So I wasn't sure if you were, does, does, do you want to share that at this point? Do you want to talk about that? Does, yeah. Or um, does anyone else have anything else about the setback tree planting program they'd like to discuss? Because this will obviously be on another, as another agenda item again as well. Setback or spring? Uh, I probably both, I think, because okay. I think we'll have to give people, we'll have to give folks an update. Say quick, I did, I have been in touch with the Rotary, so, but it's not clear if they were going to want to take on the project or not, but I'll keep everybody informed. Thank you. And, and if it, when it's on the agenda for setback, we should probably get Christina Peterson to come to the meeting. Yeah. Since okay. she's the person who was, and I'm happy to communicate with her about that but if we you know if it's on like next time just... i i can make it on next time and block a half an hour if you'd like so we can actually have a hearty discussion about it if that's okay yeah i think we do yeah i think we need to have a, okay. a discussion about it so i i'll i can communicate with her about okay. that to see make sure she can come okay and then uh jordan did you just want to touch base on the um the list that you sent along sure sure happy to thanks rich um, so, um, as a follow up to some of the discussions around setback plantings um, and understory plants, woody plants, I put together a list. Um, it's sort of a work in progress, but it's a good foundation, roughly 45 uh, woody shrub, native woody shrubs. Um, and I'm happy to send it around. Um, you can share it if you, I, I can just send it around we can, I, and we can look at it later. It's basically um, a list of, you know, botanical name, common name, uh, whether or not the shrubs are uh, full sun, uh, partial shade tolerant, as well as I uh, put something in there for wet side tolerant, because that's often a uh, defining uh, factor, whether or not uh, plant is appropriate for a given site or not. Uh, then I have a column for notes. And in the notes, I put things like salt spray or whether or not it spreads by stolons or underground stems and, and other things. You know, I can add things like wildlife uh, value, um, easy to get in the trade or, you know, ornamental value, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, sort of a jumping off point, I think, for, for this work as we go forward. I can also amend it to add things like understory trees. In other words, things that are uh, suitable for planting under power lines. Um, and 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 uh, and that kind of thing. So um, I did sort of restrict it to natives. Um, however, I'm happy to. Thanks, Jen. I'm happy to um, you know add on non-native plants. You know, native is we can spend a whole meeting right talking about what's native and and what's not. Um, <laughs> but um, I think these plants that I selected are um, pretty much run through some oddballs. To have a lot of um, wildlife and or ornamental value. As I said, st salt spray tolerant is important, um, as well as um, tolerant of salt in the soils, right? Plants tend to get get the salt two ways, through the soil or through spray um, and, and the like. So um, I hope this is a value to the team. And, um, you know, it's, as I said, something that I think I'll just keep amending Feel free to send me your, your opinions or things you'd like to add or questions, um, and we can go from there. So thank you. Harkening thank back you. to my Woody Plants instructor days, it's, it's all still there. Thank you. <laughs> That's nice. A lot of nice species you you found. You put thank on. you. Yeah. I I think I think what we should do is put this on the agenda for our next meeting to have a, just a 
you know, instead of having three, I don't know how many items we had, multiple items, maybe just having two items that we block out for a period of time that we can discuss it, uh, especially the setback program, because we want to make sure that whatever we decide to do in that brochure or how we decide to amend the brochure is what we want. And if we are going to provide a list that's extensive like this, how, you know, how would, how would, um, a resident access this list because this obviously this size list couldn't go on the brochure and how we would roll that out, et cetera. Uh um, add it to our recommended planting list be like because we have small, medium, yep. large. Yep. Could it just be a new section and put it format it graphically the same way? Or yep. does that give is that prioritize it more than we I don't know. No, I actually think um I actually think that would be I think that's a great suggestion you have for a couple that, of reasons. What's that? Do you have that planting guide? I fished around for it and I couldn't find it. So um I've seen I'll, I'll, Yeah, it's I, I think that's great. I think it would be that's a great suggestion, Sue, because I'm finding as I'm doing uh inspections or I'm driving around and looking at a single family homes that have been built that may have been um uh, you know, may, may have a site plan approval from the planning board. They have plant material that's planted all over the place. Um, and they are planting whatever plant material that that particular contractor likes or just to get the to get the lawn to look and the yard to look a certain way. So the individual so folks will buy it and then they're stuck with the plant material that's there. Um, we don't have um, a native shrub list to provide to um developers uh you know architects actually this would be like helpful here's a good example of something that would be helpful for the main street redesign right here because there are going to be multiple places on main street where there are um these types of uh, bios bioswales that have plant material um this type of low growing plant material in them so we don't have that. We don't offer that. So I think this is really a good, like a, a great menu option for that to tie into the existing tree list we have. Irregardless of, irregardless if we, sorry, that's not even a word, sorry. Um, a, as part of the existing tree planting guidelines, even if we don't add these on as like setbacks, if you follow what I'm saying, you know, in the end, if we just, if we change our mind or we, or we don't, or we do offer it, it's great because it can be used across the whole city, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So. I think just one quick comment about, um, I think it's important somewhere to have an asterisk or something about um, dwarf varieties are available because uh, you know I've seen so many projects where they'll put in native plants like a nine bark, which, which the straight species is a big stinking shrub. And it, it, but there is really nice uh, cultivars of that. And, it, you know, we could have a whole meeting about whether those are really native or not too. But, um, but I think it's important to push. I've just seen too many plans coming out of engineering uh, organization, uh, businesses and landscape architects that got the list of plants that are some are native, but they are not size appropriate. And there are many, many, many varieties. That's a big thing in the nursery industry for shrubs right now is dwarf varieties. There's just dwarf varieties of everything now. So yeah, that's a great I, idea. A, I can certainly add that. I appreciate that, that feedback. And I can certainly add that on a couple of other attributes. Um, you know, maybe as you said, some of the named cultivars. Um and you know, suitable for massing, um, good focal point, or you know, wildlife value, that kind of thing. So thanks, Jen. I can uh, certainly work on that. This is an aside, but I attended a, a webinar. Um, my partner's a master gardener, so I listened in. They had a, a presentation on by a professor on um, soil microbes, and it was really interesting the different impacts of a more deeply rooted plant. Um, looking at um, like different types of grass type plants. Some of them are maybe really shallow root. So from a carbon sequestration point of view and soil health and biodiversity, 
um, above and below ground. I, I just thought that was interesting. I hadn't really thought that much about that before, but um, other ways, plants, there's different differences in different plants, what they do. Thank you. Thank you again for putting that together. So I will pleasure. definitely block out a, um, more more time at our next meeting to talk about both of these issues as they relate to uh, the setback planting program. Um, okay. And actually, and the uh, tree list and planting guidelines. Um, all right, is there any other business not anticipated by the chair? Molly, yes. Just a quick one. Um, I think if I remember correctly, I sent an email out to all you, you with a link, or maybe Kent sent it out, mm -hmm. with a link to the really great work he did um, taking the tree planting site, um, the quarter mile radius planting site survey that I and a bunch of you helped out with, and um, translating that data into a usable map that you can go to and um, like look on a particular street and see where the setback planting sites um, are you can you can um, screen it for let's say if you want setback or if you want ones that are not under wire or whatever you can you can select different um, traits you know that you're looking for if you're looking for a certain street or whatever you can search that way so this is a fantastic resource for when we get to the point of doing setback tree plantings and well other plantings as well in that quarter in those quarter mile radii. I think you all got that, right? I can't find it, Molly. Did you send it out, Kent, or did I? I think I sent it to everybody. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. I think you did. So check it out. It's it's another amazing Kent Johnson um, creation. Really awesome. Very usable. Kent, Kent, we can't thank you enough for moving from Cambridge to Northampton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm move. happy with I'm happy with the move too. So I can just <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> all right. Uh, does anyone else have anything else that they'd like to add before we sign off? Uh, I just have two things. One, um, we may at our next meeting have uh, an update about the Main Street redesign and the plant material list and plant locations. So I will keep uh, folks uh, in the loop on that. I had a meeting with Stephanie Weir and the landscape architect the other day to discuss the 75% uh, design. Um, so um, they're going to be rolling it out. Um, the plant material um, can be changed, obviously, because some of the plant material spec, I'm sure, may not even be available at the time when this project's done, et cetera. So, um, that's not an issue. It's just it was about the actual locations of things. Um, the second thing I wanted just to tell you quickly is that um, I met with our engineering uh, um, division in regards to some of the upcoming construction projects, potentially that might be happening this spring, and there are multiple sidewalks being replaced. So I actually took the time and walked the streets with the engineers to uh, look at the trees that were there that in the tree belt, how they'd be impacted potentially how they can be retrofitted with CU soil if they're in a short tree belt um, and also using some type of uh, porous pavement. Uh, so they were, we, we counted all the trees. There's like 55 trees that will be impacted throughout the city if this project actually gets, um, um, gets funded. Um, and then we would um, use the similar treatment that we did on uh, Warfield Place to retrofit uh, existing tree planting. So I also keep you they're working all the numbers up. I also keep you in the loop of that one as well. I didn't mention that earlier. So, so that's it. That's my two items. So anything else? It is six o'clock. Bonnie has put her camera on. That means it's time for us to go home. <laughs> all right. Uh, could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Yeah, Jackie, Jackie's giving us some kind of hand signals. Sorry, right, bye, Jackie. I second. Oh, oh, <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jackie. So, uh, all right. So, uh, is there an actual real, sorry, Jackie, would like a real second from the commission? A second, second. Okay.
All right. All in favor, just raise your hands. Th thank you, everyone.